Hey, everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. And with me today, we have Jeff Anderson. Welcome to the show, sir. Hey, Thank you. Good to be here, Tom. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, welcome, everyone, to our daily chats that we do here at night. We have been running these. This is day 83. I was just looking at this, and this is exciting. Um, and it is Friday night. The weekend's here, so you can have the weekend. Um, but Jeff is the man behind the scenes of all the conventions and cruises of Board Game Geek. Uh, that is, what, four a year you do now? Uh Three a year, BGG Spring over Memorial Day weekend, BGG at Sea, our cruise varies throughout the time of the year, and then BGG Con in November. We have run two cruises back-to-back -back before, but that's a pretty rare event. So, Would you do it again? Uh, only if forced to. <laughs> the first year we did Alaska, we were forced to just because demand was so high. We didn't want to go any bigger, so we just had to run it twice. Um, we almost did it back to back next summer in Europe, uh, because we had two itineraries on the same ship that was doing two different itineraries. We couldn't quite get that to work out. So we just ended up with one, but, uh, I'll say, maybe someday. I'll say a cruise, I think is the only vacation I've ever had where when it's over, I think I could do this again right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always, I mean, cause I'm always sad when I leave a convention, but I'm not, I'm also glad I'm going home. I'm going to yeah. do things. And uh, with in, in this particular case, uh, with a cruise, though, I'm already having a good time. Well, in my case, my family's with me. So what does it matter? Yeah. In fact, yeah, no, it, it was a lot of fun doing that back to back because it's kind of cool. They get everybody else off the ship and they take the dozen of us that are staying on board the ship. And we basically get to the, uh, the balcony, check out, check back in, and we stay on the ship the whole time while it's turning over. It was kind of cool. All right, folks, I'm hearing that there is some lagging uh, on this. It is running super fine on my end, so I don't know what, unfortunately, not a lot I can do about that at this point. Um, that is a little well, weird, I, though. I hope it's not uh, my fault. <laughs> no, no, no. It's uh, the lag would come from my end apparently, or from YouTube. I hang on. Let me let me quick do a check here. Uh, we're we're still here, folks. Don't worry. Um, I'm gonna pull it up on my own computer. See if it's lagging there. Yeah, I do. See us on the screen. I see the chat. Huh. Hello, I see the chat. Weird enough, it's running on my end now. Well, anyway, people say it's, it's a little better now. We're just gonna have to yeah. go on. All right. Board says it's running now. So, well, fantastic. All right. Well, anyhow, uh, speaking of cruises, you know, I've I've toyed with the idea. I think, and I mean, this is still. I don't know when I'm gonna retire. It's you know, a good thirty years away probably. But I've thought about when I retire. I think it. I might save up money and and take my wife on a a year cruise. But I've heard of those things. <laughs> it seems like an interesting thing. The only problem is, like, well, I have a lot of children. Yeah, so, the grandkids are going to want to visit you. Well, no, no, I can, I, I can live without, you know, seeing the grandkids for a year. But like, kids might be born because you could still get off at a. I heard though that you can get off at a port though and go fly somewhere, right? And then fly back and meet the ship wherever it's at next. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it, it, it's doable. I've thought about it, and then every time I bring it up, Christine just. Gives me daggers and shoots it down. So yeah, but I, I I just say it's thirty years. So my wife's like, oh whatever, we'll worry about it then. <laughs> <laughs> a good way to push it down the road. <laughs> but I don't know that. I mean, I'm I'm kind of jesting on that. But I could see me doing at a month, for sure. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Well, we were supposed to be on a cruise ship for almost twenty days uh, in September, um, and then that all kind of fell apart. But yeah, we we were going to go. For that was our cruise this year was Vancouver, uh, Canada to, uh, all the way to Japan. 15, 16 days. I think it was. I, so. I, I just want to point out to, uh, whoever's running. Oh, it's Aldi. I'm not working till I'm 80. I, I 30, I'm 43. So I would be 73. I think 73 would be a decent time to retire. Um, or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. 
I, I've been thinking about Christine and I celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary two days ago. So thinking about 25, okay, well, 50, and then can we make it to 75? I don't know. Mortality is creeping up on us. <laughs> well, that's true. I understand that, but I, I think I would get bored if I retired. I think I would, I, I don't know. Um, so anyhow, well, if, huh? all these, if all these watching, he's not going to let me retire for a long time. So I'm not even thinking about that. Yeah, that's true. But see, I think, you know, when people look forward to retiring, they want to retire from a job maybe that they're not a big fan of. I really like my job. So yep. there's that. So, yeah, running a convention, folks, if you have any questions about what it's like running a convention, we'll tell you maybe some of the stuff behind the scenes. I'll, I'll tell you, it's a lot more work. Uh, Jeff, at the last convention you ran, which was uh, the Board Game Geek Fall last year, right? The, 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 how, many games, how many games did you play there? How many games did I play? I'm trying to think if I even played one. Um, I always say my goal is to play one game, and I almost always make it. Um, last year, uh, no, I did. I did. What did I play? I played... The Crew. Uh, I did not play The Crew. I didn't get to play The Crew until January at the BGG employee uh, retreat. Um, I can't even remember now what it was usually like Saturday night after our official closing ceremonies, I'll play something, you know, that night and relax. So I'm sure that's when I played it, but I can't remember what it was. Wow. That, that's why I do the cruises is because I keep the cruises small. They mostly run themselves and I get to play games then. But yeah, the smaller, the smaller conventions and uh, uh, there's other small conventions I'm sure that you go to over the course of the year. Right. They let you play right. games. Um, and well, last November was an anomaly as well because we were in a brand new space. And so there was so much to figure out with this new space. I was putting out fires constantly behind the scenes. A nice new space, though. It was a really great place. I was very, oh, yeah. I was very impressed with that whole... That was just a... It almost felt like it was made for a board game convention. Not quite. Like, I don't know that I would want to have a, a big convention there, like a farmer's convention or something, because it feels like it would be the wrong fit for that. But for board gaming, it just seemed quite nice. Oh, yeah. Every space was just laid out perfectly for us. A little bit further to walk from one end to the other and spread up over three floors instead of, you know, one and a half. But uh, still, they they loved having us there. We loved being there. We've got a We've got a good long-term relationship with them. We're, we're excited to continue to grow. Um, you know, one question here says, uh, Tom, have you banned someone from a con before? If so, we'd love to hear the story. I would love to not tell it, frankly. <laughs> no, I mean, I think that's like a personal thing for the most part. Like if you came to me and said, such and such a person uh, is a threat to me or whatever, are they banned for your con? I'll gladly tell you, right? right. But I don't feel like, it, there's no joy in that. At all. You know, I do my oh. best to not ban people from cons. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. It's always a difficult thing, and we, we take, we're serious about those kinds of things and take action when needed, but we don't air dirty laundry just for the sake of doing so. Yeah. Well, essentially, I don't think it's a good story. Like, I'll, I'll tell a funny story, like, oh, this one time a table got knocked over, and it might not have been funny at the time, but in retrospect, it's funny. This sort of thing isn't funny even in retrospect later on. Yeah. Uh, people are asking about what your shirt says. What my shirt says? Yeah, it's, we see peace and love. Peace, love, it meeple. Is, it's a peace, love, meeple shirt. Can, uh, can you see it now? Yes, oh, very clearly. <laughs> yep. Uh, we, we sell this shirt in the BGG store. We've been doing this shirt for, for many years. This is my favorite uh, gaming shirt, so... Um, Munching Gamer says, I've never been to a con of any kind. For the future, what should first-timers need to know? I get asked, to ask this a lot, actually. Yeah. Um, just come to have fun and uh, find, uh, I'm sure the Dice Tower events work similarly. We have a great uh, volunteer staff uh, at, at the BGG events. We call them Team Geek. You see them in the, the Team Geek football jerseys. They will help you with whatever you need, help you find a game. The, the kinds of events we run are all about just uh, 
relaxing, playing great games and meeting new friends that hopefully you're going to come back the year later and uh, play games again with them. I always tell people to not stress too much about seeing or doing everything. You can't. You're not going to play all the games you want to play. You might not even see if you're there's a if there's an exhibitor hall, you might not see all the exhibitors you meant to see. Um, if there's events, sometimes events will cross your lunch or whatever. And if you try to do as much as you possibly can, I you I've seen people that that get they just get too stressed. Yeah, you get burned out really quick. Um, we always tell people the the three two one rule. Um, I would modify for like the six two one rule. Uh, hours of sleep. Three to three minimum, but I suggest Wait, at least. I've never heard anyone say three before. Three. Uh, it's a three-two-one rule: three hours of sleep, two meals a day, and one shower. See, I don't know. I'm more of a six-three-one rule. <laughs> yeah, and six-three-two well, wouldn't kill you. We're we're we're, uh, we're both over forty, so that's true. Yeah. That's. I've been, Getting a lot more sleep these days, and I'm not. I just told my wife because we just got a puppy now, and I just realized I can't sleep in tomorrow, and I can't sleep in the next day, and I'm just not sleeping in for a long time yep. until we get that thing trained. So, ah, uh, well, um, congratulations, the new member of your family. Oh, uh, well, I, I mean, I'm in love with the puppy, so there's that. You know, it's it's the thing, but. Uh, it is nice to have a big family in this regard because I don't have to entertain the puppy all the time. I, I'm just the morning guy. I'm the yeah. one who gets up in the morning and then the you kids, take, they got it now you, somewhere. Yeah, you take the morning shift. Uh, he says, okay, then what about telling us things or even behaviors that you wish to avoid seeing at a con? It's mostly be respectful of other people. That's Doesn't everything like boil down to that? Yeah, absolutely. I universal respect for everybody. Um, I always, if there's ever a situation of tension or whatnot, I recommend you always give the other person the benefit of the doubt. Like it was not intentional and nine times out of 10, you're right. And that one time where you're wrong, you still feel better anyway. Um, sure. Well, this is excluding things, obviously like sexual harassment and things like that. All of that we just don't don't uh, tolerate in any regard. But uh, behaviors, you know, make new friends. Don't be uh, you know too clickish. You know, if if you've got an open seat at the table, let anybody sit down and play with you. Um, you'll you'll make a new friend. One thing uh, one thing I always say. One of the traditions of BGG Con is a poker tournament that I always run, and you know I say. Look, we're here for fun. Uh, we have prizes, but none of these are really, nothing is worth losing a future friend over. So you interact with is a future friend you just haven't met with. And this is actually why I push that you don't do the three, two, one rule, that the three, because I know that some people, they have very few cons a year. And so, or maybe one con a year, right? And so you go there and you, you're like, I must, I must get as much gaming in as I can. But you're not at your best with very little sleep. And it's very yeah. easy to both give and take offense when you have less sleep. Yeah. You know, you're like, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. But the people at the table you're playing games with. Roy told me the story about where he had to make one guy leave the table and go to bed because he kept falling asleep in the middle. Because he, had, he, had, he, didn't take, he didn't get any sleep. Yeah. And he just kept falling asleep and he didn't know what he was doing. And it was kind of ruining the whole game because he just needed sleep. Well, one way to look at it is talk to those people who have been going to cons for a long time, and you'll find that they play less and less games every year, and they're just more interacting with people socially. It's, you know, don't worry about keeping score or about fitting as much in. Just get to know new friends and enjoy the new place. All right, well, the questions have come in about Virtual Con, and we knew that was going to happen, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. So Virtual Con is a joint convention with Board Game Geek and Dice Tower, although that Board Game Geek, it is their con that we're, they're just happily letting us come on board with. Um, this okay. is the first large-scale virtual event of this type. It's not the first virtual gaming con, but it is one of the first ones. And so uh, the easiest way here to do this is kind of to show it. So 
Uh, I sure. know I know you're all loving looking at Jeff's face, but he's going to replace that with the screen and just kind of give us a tour um, of this, if that's okay, Jeff. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's, looking at the at the screen is a lot better than looking at me. I, I have a face for radio, as they say. And no one says that. But um, as, as we do this, if you have questions, we'll, we'll let them go through some of the stuff first, and then we'll ask specific questions about it. Sure. Sure. So let me uh, start sharing my screen. And Tom, you tell me if it comes up okay. Yep, we can see it. And I'm actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come off here and we're going to make it bigger. And then I'm, and I, I don't even need to be on screen now. As, as long as people can still hear us both, we're just going to look at the screen. If either one of us starts snoring, uh, throw, sh- throw something into the chat. All right. Um, so, yeah, we've got uh, – this is kind of the the front page for Virtual Gaming Con on the tabletop event side. Let me actually – if you've been seeing the con on our uh, social medias and such, um, you might come to this page first that I just did want to show real quick because it does list uh, some of our – Well, now we're looking at news. Things. Yeah, by the way, I'm, I'm intentionally using a browser I never use. So whatever was on that page was just the default. I don't even know what was there, and I can't take any credit or blame for anything that was being shown. Um, I'm using Edge so that I can be logged into the site with my uh, lesser powerful ability, so it looks like the site anybody would be looking at. So this is the landing page for Virtual Gaming Con, um, and we're excited. We basically, the reason we put this on is because BGG Spring got canceled, Dice Tower East got canceled, and we still wanted to game together. And we came across um, a very good website called Tabletop.Events that for a long time has been a platform to run physical gaming cons. And they have done some integrations to make virtual gaming happen as well. So if we uh, click over here to the virtual gaming con, um, you'll be brought here. And just some more general information about uh, what's going on. I want to highlight, I'm not going to read every single thing or take you to every single page, but I want to highlight a few things out here. Um, if you've never been on tabletop.events before, uh, there's some good how-to pages up here under the attend menu, how to buy a badge, what it means to buy a ticket. Um, first, you need to create an account and um, so that you can get a badge. We have shared uh, discount codes with BGG Spring attendees and Dice Tower East attendees so that they can get free badges or pay for more expensive badges at a discount. Anyone who hosts an event for the site will get a free gamer badge. Uh, So we try and make it really easy. So I just want to recommend you look at some of these pages here. Um, I'll mention really quick this one about badge types and perks. The badges that we have, uh, $10 is, is kind of the entry level. This level of badge is free for anyone hosting an event. Um, this is also, we gave BG Spring and Dice Tower East a $10 discount code. So you can get this badge for free or $10 off the higher level badges. And just to, uh, just to jump in here, if you get the, the badge, that, that, that basic badge, you can play games with everybody. There's not like, yeah. there's not like VIP games or things. That is correct. The, every badge level has the same access to every event. The only difference in the badges is that we're going to throw in some virtual or physical perks at a higher badge level, but they have no bearing whatsoever on how you will experience virtual gaming con during that last week in June. Uh, so this first higher level is called Super Gamer. These aren't the best names. We just came up with something and just ran with it, and no one ever gave us any better ones. But we've got Super Gamer at 25 you're going to get a pair of Dice Tower Dice and a $10 gift certificate to the BGG promo store. Uh, At $50, you get everything that was there at Super, 
and then you get a BGG perk. You can pick a uh, one of our games, our special edition games, or some of the uh, custom silicone products we have, the bit bowls or the card holders. You'll also get a dice tower perk, a dice tower tote bag, or custom dice tower card sleeves, or an animal pin. Um, at the $75 level, you get everything above the t-shirts. And um, I just got to say, the t-shirt is going to look awesome. They're, they're, we're having some samples run right now, um, but it's basically going to be uh, that logo that uh, you saw up here on the front of the shirt. And then on the back of the shirt, we'll have all of our sponsors. Uh, their logos will be on the back of the t-shirt. So you pick which badge level you want. Um, and you just simply go in here to uh, attend, get your badge. And you'll come in here and add it to your cart. You can see I've already got a regular gamer badge to just show things out. So you can, you can buy multiple badges. You can give them to friends. You can see a list here of all the badges you've bought. Um, and so let's say I went to BGG Spring and I got that $10 discount code, but I actually want the super gamer level, uh, get some of the perks here. I would go in, I would fill in the discount code that I was given, add it to the cart, and then instead of $25, it'll be $15 plus the uh, tabletop.events fees and things like that. Um, one thing I want to mention here that uh, is new as of today, you'll see that any badge type has a special ticket to one of Tom's events. And so <laughs> okay. that, that leads us into uh, the scheduling. Let me talk about the schedule real quick and what tickets are. Um, so if we go back to the homepage, something that a lot of people see, you can see you can buy badges, buy tickets. Let me just say right now, the system calls it buying a ticket, but you don't buy tickets at all. You need a badge to participate with the convention. A is basically a at the table for an event for a specific game, and they are all free. Now, tabletop.events runs lots of other conventions. And if you've ever been to Gen Con or other conventions like that, your tickets are, you know, $2 per ticket. So we've made the tickets in our con all free, but you'll see the nomenclature of buying tickets. They're still free. But if you look at, if you, when you click on buying a ticket, what that means is take you to the event and find something that you want to play in. So right here, uh, we could go play Dune, and I can see there's one seat available. So I could go in there and read more about this event, about Dune, who's running it. Um, it's going to be on Tabletop Simulator. And then there's one available. If it was all full, there is a waiting list. You could get on the waiting list for something that's full up. So I could just say, get ticket for my badge, and then I would need to check out, but you'll see that since the ticket is free, I would check out for free. Now, I'm not actually going to do that because I don't want to take this seat away from someone else who would want to play Dune uh, because I'm going to be too busy running this convention to play anything. But it's just that easy to get a ticket to any event. You can see all the events up here. Um, on the event schedule, and then there's also my schedule. Well, let's take a look at some of the, oh yeah, the my schedule. That's, that's something I really like about this, where you can go yeah. in and you can see all your events and so you don't, right here. Yeah. it just makes Sorry. life a lot easier to see all that. Um, uh, we also make it really clear, this, is, this event's sponsored by uh, Tabletopia, but anything can be used. So if you could play with people just over Zoom, um, over Skype, you could play on iOS, you could play on Android, you could play on Tabletop Simulator, Tabletop Arena, you know, whatever. You could play with physical copies of the game. Role-playing games could happen. Absolutely. Yeah, we, uh, some good friends of mine, uh, we spent the last, you know, six weeks every Friday night playing Detective just over Zoom. And, you know, we had a copy of Detective and they 
use the uh, the website, and there you go. Uh, on my schedule, the only thing I've signed up for is the opening ceremony, and so that's on my schedule. And um, you know, there's a uh, hundred thousand tickets available for the opening ceremony. <laughs> that is one of the benefits of an online con. <laughs> right, we can scale up infinitely, and so. This is a special kind of event that's going to be on the main stage. Uh, so we can talk about the main stage briefly. All th- during the con, there will be a, a main stage. A, uh, similar, if anybody's familiar with what we did with BGG Con Line a couple weeks ago, and I think very similar to, Tom, what you'll be doing next week with Summer Spectacular. That's actually yeah, be like, the following week, yes. The following week, yeah. But there will be kind of a, a, a constant streaming of different kinds of events. And that will be hosted. Um, I don't know if we've changed the website. It, it, if it's not at this website, it will be something very much like this website. At boardgamegeek.com slash live, you can see you know, there will be a stream up here. And sometimes it will be Lincoln and Nikki from Game Night. Uh, showing off something. Sometime it might be Tom or Z doing something from their stream. Sometime it might be uh, Bezier Games or Portal running their own Twitch stream, but we'll be hosting it here on the main stage. So that's one thing we want people to be aware of is all of these main stage events. Um, uh, a lot. I did want to say real quick, a lot of our sponsors are signing up for slots and we do want to reach out to the community of content creators out there. If you'd like to be featured on the main stage during times where we don't already have somebody else programmed into that slot, send a, an email to Lincoln at BoardGameGeek.com and let him know about when you'll be streaming. And we'll put anybody up on the main stage if there's not already something slotted up there. We got a couple questions here, which I think uh, you know. I want to clarify to people. Fred wants to know. He says, "I don't understand. Is I don't understand where the games are online or an app." And the fact is, is that the games can be anywhere, right? But what it's doing is this is helping you find other people. So let's say the game is on Tabletopia. Well, then, since Tabletopia is going to be uh, free to everyone who signs up for this event, you'll be able to go there and find that game and play it. If it's Tabletop Simulator, you may have to you'll have to own a copy of Tabletop Simulator and download the module of that game. If you if it's an iOS, you need to own that copy of the iOS game. If it's something like Werewolf or, you know, they'll tell you what you need. So actually, can you click on that Learn to Play Plunderbund? And so this is a yeah. game. So this is probably a game that probably most people may not have in their house. So so what does it say down here? So this is, this is actually one of our exhibitors, one of our sponsors that is putting this on. So play the game with the designer. It's, uh, he's doing it throughout the week, but this one's for Wednesday. Um, he's going to do it on Tabletop Simulator. And so you'll need to have Tabletop Simulator there to be able to do it. Um, the other thing, so Tom is correct that the game can be anywhere. And, and just to make clear, Tabletopia is a premier level sponsor of the event they are making their entire platform free all premium content free for everyone during the dates of our event here but you could play anywhere there there's another component though of where is the game that being we have a discord channel for coordinating for discussion for getting the group together to then jump over to Tabletopia or a, a place to talk about it. So this game is going to be in the board games room on table number BG22. Well, what does that mean? If we look at our Discord server, I can click this right here, text channel. I've already joined the Discord server, and this is going to bring up our Discord server uh, as soon as it connects here. And you don't have to use the web app if you have the Discord app itself, um, which I should probably bring over because, it looks, well, okay, it popped in. So right here is table number BG22. Here's a text channel for everyone to talk about 
at the right time playing this game. And there's also a voice channel as well. You just click on this, uh, click right here, and suddenly you're all talking to each other as if you were on a Skype call or a Zoom meeting. So this is a very important part of our convention being the Discord server. And I really quickly want to point everybody, go to attend and then Discord. And here you'll get a lot of information about getting to the Discord server and then finding this event, if it's going to happen here, that means it's happening here on Discord. And that's where you can talk to people. The other thing about Discord is we have our uh, general lobby channels. We have, we're going to have a lot of help channels here. There's going to be moderators here helping people get into games. We have a place to coordinate some of the main stage events. We have our virtual exhibitor hall. These are all some of our exhibitors that have signed up already, and we do have more than this. This is just what I got into the system so far today. This is basically their virtual booth. You come into this text channel and talk with them or jump into the voice channel and, and talk about they'll, they'll be there manning their booth in this place right here. And then we have all these other different categories of games. Uh, open gaming is space to coordinate pickup games, things that have not been scheduled ahead of time. But otherwise, we have all these other categories of things that have been scheduled back over here on tabletop.events on, uh, on the event schedule. And then the, the last thing I wanted to mention um, on the schedule of events, I just clicked on adding this special column right here so you can see what events are like being sponsored by exhibitors. And then we have a special group for any of the events that Tom is going to host so that uh, he doesn't get overwhelmed and flooded and we, we do a little bit of a uh, limitation there. Yeah, I'm going to be adding more events soon. I just wanted – I added that one to make sure that I knew how to add an event, um, which, which I do. Um, a couple things here. If you search by keyword or event number, you can search for something. So if you put Tabletopia there, it will bring up all the games that run on Tabletopia. Um, or at least yep. that's I, – I just tested it on my own computer, and that seems like that works pretty well. And you can see there's quite a few already. Yeah, um, and there's a just click right down here for a column. What online virtual system will be used to play? So I added that, and then you could see if I take Tabletopia out and we just let it be free, you can see kind of all the different places people are going to be playing their games. And yeah, that's really useful. I think that's definitely a column I'll have on mine when looking yeah. at it, just because that would probably affect, you know. But you can see there's a, there's already a, a decent amount of different. Um, Types of systems uh, that are there. So, and so if you example, hate one of the systems, for example, you're, you, you'll and like the other one, you'll be fine. Right. Uh, let's just look at our RPGs, and there's a uh, RPG system here. So um, you can see if you want to play D and D Fifth Edition, or if you want to play Kids on Bikes, or we have some, you know, new homegrown unpublished ones. So lots of different things to look at down here in different columns you might want to turn on or turn off as you're looking at, at the other things. Now, uh, Jeff, one thing I do want to, want to yeah. Uh, when just talking about discord real I'm sorry, quick, Tom, you cut out there. You, yeah. Uh, when it comes to discord, um, if someone can't or doesn't want to use discord, they, you could still play with other people and you might be able to communicate through other means if you really wanted to. Absolutely. Discord is, is not required for anything. Um, what you may need to do, uh, for example, let's just look at this one. Uh, let's go back to uh, something that has the um, so this, this RPG here. Um, the event host has the ability, uh, I'm not the event host, so I can't see it, but the event host has a button down here saying message attendees. And the event host doesn't get your email address, but through the tabletop.event, he has the ability to email all the attendees and coordinate things 
And we recommend every event host do that and so that they can, the attendees could email back if for some problem they had, they couldn't get on through Discord. So there is that method of communication as well. But it is going to be a much diminished experience without Discord. A lot of tabletop.events is where everything gets scheduled, but Discord is going to be where a lot of the communication happens. Um. And I say, Three weeks ago, I didn't know a thing about Discord, and now I'm running a server. It's very easy to learn. Yeah, it, I've noticed it's. I, I use Slack a lot, and I've noticed that Discord has a lot of similarities to Slack. So, it's yeah. it's it seems pretty simple. I'll be I'll be messing with it some, and um, it, it, yeah. As someone asked, you know, do you need a webcam? I guess you don't 100 percent need one, but it will definitely enhance your experience. Absolutely. Yeah. You, it, on most of the platforms like Tabletopia, Tabletop Simulator, um, I've been playing games online with friends on both of those platforms over the last month or two. And we've, been, we've used Discord for our audio channel, but we haven't turned the cameras on at all just because we're all looking at the board. We're, you know, we're all looking at the game and just talking to each other using Discord. So you, you can be playing the game on Tabletopia and then in your audio channel on Discord. Uh, Discord does have video as well. If you drop into, um, you know, nobody's here, but let me go uh, into uh, Bezier Games voice channel. This might not work with the web uh, client, so I'm not going to dig into that. But if you if you, all you have to do is click on one of these channels and suddenly you're in the audio channel and then there is a, a way to turn on your camera and it's video as well speaking of jumping into channels someone asks here is it possible to watch games like to get familiar with a new game or or as a guest player that will uh depend on the event host but i would say absolutely i don't see that being a problem i would check with the there, there's nothing in the system that will keep you from doing that. Um, I know Tabletopia has a, a way to have spectators. Um, well, I know one of the systems does, and I'd be surprised if they both didn't. So I better, I better be careful. Um, I've, I'm getting Tabletopia and Tabletop Simulator mixed up in my head right now, but I think there are ways to observe a game in progress and not actually play. I have to say, folks, there's some pretty fun things signed up here. I noticed that the Pandemic Survival Virtual Tournament there run by Beth Hiley, that's a really cool event um, where you can uh, – uh, basically everyone's playing the same game of Pandemic. The same cards are given to everybody. You say play the same characters. It's that, that's a neat – this is something that's, that can work really well over the Internet. So – and I'll mention, I've just been informed by my uh, support crew that you are able to spectate on Tabletopia. So thank you for that support crew being Aldi. He just messaged me. So Okay. Uh, then, okay. So there's a couple other things here um, that people are asking. Um, it's inevitable that there's going to be technical issues here. Um, maybe like in the middle of a game. What if, what if someone's crashes? in the game, or is that a case-by-case -case thing? Um, it's going to be a case-by-case -case thing. I know for a fact Tabletopia has a way for you to get back into the game you were just playing, because it happened to my brother when we were playing uh, Scythe over there. Um, I imagine most of the platforms can do that. And I will also do want to point out there is a tech support channel on Discord, and we do have uh, some volunteers that are helping us staff that channel some some people who are smarter than me to to help out with that so just jump over there with any questions you have and we'll we'll do our best to help you out now with that being said the convention is 24 hours it's worldwide i am not staying up 24 hours and we're not asking our volunteers to stay up 24 hours so if it's you know 3 a.m central time there might not be a moderator around when you want them, but 
Well, speaking well, we'll of that, that what about moderators themselves? What if someone is rude to me on this system here? Um, again, go to Discord and just click right here. And, well, that's me. But you could message any moderator that's up here in the top right, direct message, and ask them to help you take care of a situation. Uh, we also have, and this is very important to point out, we do have a code of conduct. Um, we have a short version for kids of all ages to read. And then we have the longer version with all of the, uh, all of the stuff, all the things we expect and things that are unacceptable. If there's something you're not comfortable with, you can hit us up on Discord. You can email, uh, the team directly. This is a, someone will always be able to answer this group email. These are the individuals that are generally on that group once. If you want to work one-on-one -on -one with someone because you're more comfortable talking to someone from the Dice Tower or a certain gender in any way, you can email us specifically as well. But uh, we do expect somebody to read through this code of conduct and abide by it. So, Daryl, you just joined. You said, what's the name of the Discord channel to join? You'll find that on the virtual game con thing again you just go to tabletop.events and you can sign up for virtual gaming con there or there's a link straight from the top of uh, board game geek uh they have a the top news story there and also i believe and dice tower con and the top banner there yeah everywhere you go you'll be pointed to this landing page here um and then it has links over to the tabletop event site and uh, you know, I want to keep that page live, so I'll go back over here, and then it'll take you to the home page. But then, just any questions you have, go right here. For example, Discord is the page right here, and this is how you accept the Discord server invite. There's also we kind of talked about attend pretty closely. Hosting is how you create your own event. If you want a free badge, put an event up. It can be any kind of event, and it's really easy to make any events. I, um, I put an event in to test the system. You declined your own event? I declined my own event. Basically, Kenny told me I needed to because he didn't think I'd, have, I'd actually have time to run it. But depending on how things go on Wednesday, I might put this event back up for Thursday or something. Uh, but it's really easy to make an event. And as soon as you put an event in, we'll give you a free badge. Uh, can, can people join the discard now to test it out or only after they bought a badge? Um, <laughs> I will tell you that, uh, technically anybody can get into the discord server right now to test it out. It is not hidden behind, you know, anybody can come to the discord page and click accept the invite to the discord server. Um, we ask that you get your badge first so that you can sign up for events and get involved that way. If we get flooded with people strafing our Discord server, we will ban folks if they don't have badges. Uh, we do want to keep it, you know, tied to the people who pay, so to speak. So there's a lot of this, – this website, it looks like there's a lot going on, folks, but at the end of the day, the setting up and looking for events is the easy part. Don't, don't sign up for every single event. You make sure you can get from one event to the next. You know, you don't know how long. Games always – remember, they always take longer than you think. And right. there's also going to be events being started during the con themselves. And if you don't find anyone running the game you want to play, start it up. You know, I'm – yep. Create your own event, or during the con, if you find some downtime, jump into the channel looking for a game, and we have the open gaming channel set up for pickup events, for just things that randomly happen uh, without being pre-scheduled. So there's over 100 events already scheduled, and there will be more for sure. I know this because I will probably schedule 10 more events myself. Um, and some publishers are coming in and going to be demoing games off and things like that. And I mean, you have a better chance of playing with the designer here almost than you might at a, at a normal con. Absolutely. Um, 
One other thing I did want to mention, Tom, if unless you've got another question for me right now. Not yet. Go ahead. Um, uh, I believe, do we talk about it on... I don't know where we talk about it, but it's important to talk about. Um, there will be a um, charity auction going on during the week of the event as well. One thing we do at uh, BGG events is we usually do something to to you know, raise money for charities. And so there will be a geek list. It's being worked on, so I don't have a link for it yet. But... Um, it will have lots of awesome things coming, you know, things that we're retiring out of the BGG library or things that Aldi bought two of on Kickstarter and he only needed one. So some awesome things, bundles, as well as some bundles donated by our sponsors that we will have a geek list auction. And all of the proceeds uh, for that auction are going to be split between uh Board Game Geek and Dice Tower's preferred charities. And I know for Dice Tower, that's the Jack Vassal uh, Memorial Fund. And for uh, Board Game Geek, that is the um, Cafe Momentum. And I know there's a page about it in here somewhere. I just can't remember where it is. Um, I I know one place you can see it on the available sponsorships. We tell our sponsors one of the things they can do is add to the charity auction prize. And so there's information here. Uh, we will have uh, more information available uh, soon, and we'll get this geek list posted up on the uh, on BGG so that you can participate in the auction once we get all the bundles put together. Uh, but uh, so we're we're really excited about that as well. Someone's asking about, you know, do you need to know the game ahead of time or not? Um, I've noticed a lot of the games here are, say, learn to play and things. If you're not sure, again, it's really easy. You can just text the person running it you, using the system here and ask them that question. I'll need to, um, I know it's very easy for the host to message their attendees. I think there's a little bit of a hiccup currently with going in the opposite direction for an attendee to message back their host. All right, never mind what I just um, said then. It's something we're trying to get into the system, and we hope we have it there by the time it actually goes live. Well, if so. not, there's still a lot of them are clearly labeled as learn to play. Absolutely. Yes. Learn to and play. I have everybody's email address, so I can facilitate communication as needed. I'd rather not be the switchboard operator. But if you have any problem, at the bottom of every page, you can contact us, send an email to the group, and we'll try and get it answered for you. Are the physical perks available to be ordered internationally? They are. So let's go back to uh, badge types, perks, and merch. So um, the, the perks for the badges are going to be shipped for free internationally if you buy the badge. But if you, let's say you just want the gamer or the super gamer and the t-shirt, any, any perk is also available um, in the BGG store. Now, you'll pay shipping if you just buy it from the store. Um, and it looks like our link is active, so I'm going to click on this and see. There's, um, you can just buy the perks directly. If you want a second t-shirt or you didn't get a free t-shirt and you want the t-shirt, or let's say you really want lots of those dice tower dice, all of the perks are available here for purchase and we ship around the world. Now, my wife, if she's watching, will want me to mention in the time of coronavirus, there are currently some countries we cannot ship to. So it depends on your country, but, uh, one way or another, eventually we could try and get it to you. I also wanted to point this out. There are some things in here, I believe, or things will be in here that aren't necessarily a perk. But, um, yeah, for example, the Dice Tower Animal Meeple set. That's not a perk at any of our levels, but it is something that is in a special collection for this event. There will also be... 
Um, and I don't know the details on this, but if you were around during BGG Online, we announced that we did have a separate store called the Geek Game Shop. A lot of the actual board games that were featured were available for purchase. And we're going to try and do something similar with that during Virtual Gaming Con. If any of the publishers have games that they're showing off in our virtual exhibit hall, they'll be available for sale as well through some mechanism. Aldi's got more of the details on that. And that information will be coming out down the road. Sure. And this is, again, you know, I always tell people, if you're not sure what to do at a convention, ask. The same thing is true here. You're not sure what's going on? Ask. You know, there's lots of friendly people and gamers who will help. Someone mentioned here in the comments, there's already a geek list with game requests. So if you want to learn a game, you could post and say, hey, I want to learn this game, and maybe someone will teach it to you. Yep. There is a um, – you bring up a great point, Tom. Let me mention um, – if you have questions, we've got a forum over on the, the BGG forums, all dedicated – just to this virtual gaming event. Lots of questions have been asked so far. I've been in there answering as many as I could. And then um, that geek list you were mentioning started as a forum thread here that uh, I believe Steph Hodge started this forum thread, but then she did convert it to a geek list. Um, boy, Microsoft Edge is super slow. Google Chrome is way faster. I, I've never used Edge, but you're not you're not selling me on it. <laughs> well, and like I said, the only reason I use Edge is because cookies. Um, I wanted to bring up tabletop dot events have being logged in with a user that did not have ultimate power because there are certain things I don't want to show off to everybody. And my Google Chrome is my preferred browser, and that's where I'm logged in over there. And you see all kinds of things on the back end that I don't want to show you. But here is that uh, uh, request list. If there's a game you want to learn, throw it on here, and, and maybe somebody will uh, will host it for you. Uh, someone says, uh, besides this particular video that we're doing, will there be how to any vir how to virtual con videos be made? That is a great question. Um, there have been talks of some. I I can't promise when any specifically will will come out. Um, I know I've talked with Aldi about getting on some of the, uh, the board game live streams to maybe do something like that. Um, Tabletopia, I know, is wanting to have some how-to Tabletopia videos, and I don't know if they'll have it done in time, but they are, you know, talking about it or, or working on it. Um, the, the short answer is, you know, jump in our forum and ask any question that you might have. But, uh, you know, keep, keep an eye on our various, uh, you know, Twitter or, or the front page of, of BGG. Um, we will, I, I will mention if you have a badge for Virtual Gaming Con, there is a news feature. We have an easy way to send out newsletters and public news postings as well. But, it will email all badge holders when we put out a news item. And we will probably put one out next week. And we will use that to communicate with everyone or point somebody to a new video we might be doing or a new live stream. If I feel confident enough that I can teach it and show it, I might put some up on the Dice Tower channel too. Um, at least I can show some basic stuff. Um, sure. All righty, Jeff, thanks for showing us that. Let's pop back to the normal people here, faces of us both. All right. And I'm back also. All right, folks, last chance. you got five minutes. Any other questions? They could be about anything besides there's right now, Jeff, currently a debate on uh, Aldi says Firefox is better. Uh, oh. I'm a Chrome guy myself. Uh, I do the same thing that Jeff does. I have Chrome. And then I use Safari when I need to show somebody something that is does not have my browse all the, all my cookies enabled. Right. <laughs> um, right. Is there a deadline for buying badges? Yes, we will let you buy a badge uh, up. I 
until either the last hour of the con or the hour before the con starts. <laughs> it's right. one of those, but I think we'll let you buy a badge Sunday night at 11 p.m. if you really wanted to. Uh, <laughs> actually, no, I can tell you really quick. It, uh, I can pull it up because it'll. It, there's actually a deadline. Oh, no, that's the refund deadline. Uh, will schedule submissions be halted prior to the con? Uh, no, actually, we're going to allow events to be scheduled all the way through and during the con. Now, if you schedule your event on Saturday with the con ending on Sunday, you probably won't have a lot of people sign up for it unless they know about it already through some other channel. But we do want it to be possible for you to do so. So events can be scheduled up. and I know for certain that can be scheduled up until 11 p.m. Sunday night, January 28th. Or June 28th. All right, let's see here. Any other cool questions? People are thanking for the tour. And yeah, thanks, Jeff, for showing us all this. Jeff is the most organized person I've ever met in my life. <laughs> okay, I, I'll take that mostly as a compliment. Thank well, you. I don't think that's a negative. How would that be a negative thing? Oh, no. I, I, some people give me a hard time for being too you know, retentive or too organized, but no, it's, it's what I do. I like details. So that's Thank true. You. I like people who like details. Cause then I have to worry about fewer of them. Uh, when, <laughs> when we go through this stuff, I folks, I, I, I am not blowing smoke when I say how excited I am about this. I am. I'm looking forward to a week of playing games. I just, I just want to play games with people and have a good time. Um, this is going to be, just a hopefully relaxing time for everyone. And I've been poking around this. This site is amazing. It's so clean. My favorite part is that my schedule thing. I love yep. that. I, I'm, I'm hoping to see actual real cons use that in the future type thing because that's just so convenient. Like, what am I doing right now? Oh, here it is. Uh, especially, especially for those yeah. of us who think we're playing a game at 2 o'clock and realize that it's 2 o'clock tomorrow. That's happened to me at more than one con. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's a fantastic site. Uh, it's it's been around for many years, and it runs. It's the platform that a lot of you know local regional cons run on top of, and uh, they've they've done a great job with the site. We've we're we're very happy with it. Uh, okay, some quick questions. Is there a limit to the number of schedules at specific times? I believe we currently do not allow any one badge to sign up for an event. More no. than one of them. No, I, I mean, I think they're saying, how can there be more than 100 events at 2 o'clock on Thursday? Uh, there's no limit there. I mean, there's a, there's no, we intend for there to be no limit. So we will make more virtual spaces to handle more events at the same time. It's, it's all just in the cloud. So we can, we can make, and in fact, uh, another convention we're kind of copying they had too many role-playing games show up. They had more than 25 at a time, and so they made another whole room for more RPGs. It's really easy to scale. I'm actually hoping to play an RPG during this event myself, so we'll, we'll see. If I see yeah. one that looks interesting, I might pop in it. Um, can you drop in and leave whenever you're a spectator? I know the answer to that one. That's yes. You know, you, you can't, you're not stuck to the end of the game when you're watching it. Right. Is it possible to schedule a group looking for a player to either teach them a game or game master an RPG group? I suppose you could schedule an event and you're the one running it and your friends all join it and then you say, we're looking for a fifth person who can teach and run it. <laughs> I, Absolutely. I, I, I guess you, you could do it that way. As long as you make it very clear in the description that that's what you're looking for, uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Games are running 24, se well, not 24 7, 24 5. But 24 5. Yes. Um, what about, like, is the Board Game Geek badge tied to this at all? Like, will you recognize people from Board Game Geek or, like, once, is their username anything they want? Yes. Yeah, so on Discord, uh, so on Tabletop Simulator or Tabletopia or Roll 20 or wherever you are. We have a zero control over your any of that, what your username is or anything. In Discord, you can sign up with whatever Discord user ID you want, um, and you can actually change your nickname on our server 
to be different than what your username is across the rest of Discord. Just find yourself in the list, right click and say change server nickname. Um, I also want to point out that Dice Tower folks will be highlighted in blue when you see them on Discord and BGG folks will be highlighted in purple when you see them on Discord. Moderators will be highlighted in green and exhibitors I think are yellow and all of those colors I just said are subject to change but Dice Tower is pretty locked in on blue and Woo! BGG is Go pretty blue. locked in on purple. Yeah. All right, folks. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Like I said, there will be, I'm sure there'll be lots of questions over the next week and a half before it starts. There's a forum that go ask those. Um, like, well, well, like I said, I'll try to get a video made, put up on the channel and we're, I'm, I have been watching people work really hard on this for the last several weeks. Just it's, it's, I know it's been consuming Jeff's time for sure. Um, and yeah. Sharon, Sharon and Kenny from Dice Tower helping and a ton of people from Board Game Geek. It's, um, it's very exciting. So I hope that you all consider coming and having a good time with us. Jeff, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Tom. It was a pleasure to be here. And uh, please join us in a couple weeks. Yeah, it's, I'm excited. We'll see you all next time. Um, daily chat tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Come back then. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.